Hello everybody, anybody who can see this. I'm kind of waiting for this to show up on my broadcast list on my phone so that I can see, you know, anything that you guys are trying to ask me. <laughs> this stuff is kind of tricky, so I'm just trying to see. Is it up? If I don't answer you, I'm not ignoring you, I promise. You might just have to go to Twitter and talk to me there. Um, so what I want to talk to you about today is who do we rely on? All right. With this Trump presidency, or let me just start from here. Let me just start from, from, from the beginning. <laughs> so I was reading, of course, in our Bible study, Zechariah. And I believe it's Zechariah 13. Yep, Zechariah 13. Got my Bible out. Right, y'all. I got a little blue Bible. I have my notes out because otherwise I wouldn't be able to remember it. <laughs> so Zechariah 13 talks about the idea, basically, that these pe these are a people who aren't relying on God. They rely on like signs. They rely on their um, it's not pastors, but people who tell them sort of like the future, they rely on those types of things. Instead of relying on God for guidance and for truth. So he is correcting that and taking them a step back so that they can see who they should truly rely on. And it made me think to my past where my husband and I used to run debt all the time, like we had credit cards just like everybody else and everything. And God sat there and showed me if you had had that credit card in the moments that you were you had need and relied on that credit card instead of me, you would never have the story that you have or your piece of personal history that you have in order to tell people and show people how good God is. Excuse me. So, it started actually having me think, you know, about insurances and, you know, why do we do, as Christians at the very least, what we do as far as buying insurances and and relying on governments and things like that to do things when really the way we should be doing things is the church should be taking care of the church so we shouldn't be in debt you know we shouldn't when someone has a need we shouldn't be turning them away we should be helping them things like that you know I I believe wholeheartedly that we've just we've gotten out of whack and we we've gone the wrong way from who we're supposed to truly rely on for everything that we need and that includes our freedom so for example how to sort of you can kind of you can tie this into anything really where people when they were voting for Trump they call him things like God Emperor Daddy or whatever the Great White Hope even I've heard that <laughs> So this is a man though, and as a man, he is fallible. He is, you know, prone to mistakes, prone to doing evil, etc. like that. He's not the answer to fix everything. No president is, no government is, no, no representative is. The thing that fixes everything is Christ. It is the the precepts of the Bible. That's what fixes everything. That's what that's what fixes mankind. That's what creates a way for us to live peacefully and to prosper and to live free. And so I thought about this when I was reading Zechariah and it just really it hit me sort of that way where you know we rely on our insurances. We rely on our um, our governments way way too much we rely on things that is actually the position of the church and God to provide. 
so you know I, I have several ideas of how that would work so in the Bible it talks about in the in the church the early church people were selling you know land people were selling things that they owned people were making sure everybody had what they need um, so that the church was whole the church didn't have to worry about it because we all took care of each other in this way there was no need for things like insurances there's no need for things like government help there's no need for things that we totally rely on now because we think oh we need it what happens if my house burns down what happens if I get totally sick you know and can't do anything what happens if I become paraplegic what happens what happens what happens well the answer to that for a Christian is supposed to be the church the church is supposed to take care of you when you have things drastic like that happen we're supposed to be taking care of each other there's there's you know you're supposed to be doing your part as far as working and making sure you're living a frugal life and saving and investing and things like that but then also on the other side it's the church the church is supposed to take care of you as well and that is God taking care of his people through his bride so I think many times we as Christians we lose opportunities to see the movement of God and to work and to show you know how he works and to show how great he is because we, re we rely on those things and you can see that with things like the president there are a lot of Christians I know who are like really happy he became the president and I am too I'm just glad Hillary didn't win that's what it is for me um, <sighs> But then they say, you know, this person's going to fix everything. This person is not going to fix hardly anything. They're going to fix maybe half of one thing, and then they will be done. There is this reliance on things when that I even see, you know, conservative people talk, you know, well, this should be mandatory. This should be a law. This should be this, that, or the other. That is people trying to control other people. And when my husband and I were listening to Ben Shapiro, Ben Shapiro was saying, you know, um, vaccines should be mandatory. It should be a law that you can't not vaccine your child. And I disagree with that. I agree with vaccinations. You should vaccine your child. I don't think it should be a law that you must do it, though. I don't think that that is... I don't think it's right, basically. If I don't want to vaccine my child, I should not have to. What happens if, like so many children out there, they're allergic to the things that are in the vaccines, the carriers for the vaccine? What happens to, for people who can, just cannot do that? They're allergic to metals, things like that. There's all kinds of reasons to not make that a mandatory law. But here we have a conservative speaker saying that. So this made me think again, no, this is why we can only rely on God. We can only rely on the, the freedom that he outlines for us. And that is the freedom to choose. I, I think that even as conservatives, a lot of the times we rely on the government. And instead of just going out and, and, Try, you know, go out and talk to your neighbors. Go out and do what's right amongst them. Go out and use your public space to get these thought processes out to other people to think of them. There's a man <clears throat> who stood up in North Carolina to talk about how lawmakers are always willing to take away the rights and the freedoms from the people who pay the taxes and obey the law but then the people who don't never have that problem because they're not taxed or they don't pay taxes they don't follow the law and they don't care about following the law <clears throat> and he used this public forum to say that and me over here in a different state watching him say that I was very very encouraged now again I'm not going to rely on this man and say you know he's my guy what I am going to say is that in this moment this man made a difference and 
I think what we have to do as a church is understand that we need to make a difference in each, other, in each other's lives and help people to understand we are here for each other because we all rely on God. And I would just say for yourself to think about who do you really rely on? Are you out here buying insurances? Are you out here relying on governments, relying on the guy that you voted for? Are you out here doing these things and thinking that this is how I fix this? This is how I do this? Or are you saying to yourself, I'm going to vote for the best possible outcome. And then what I'm going to do is go out there and try to change hearts and minds to Christ. Or at the very least, get these Christian concepts out there that are also conservative and many, and many times are also conservative ideas. So, I mean, which one are we, are we going to do? I think that hanging our hats on a person, excuse me, I just got done eating, <laughs> hanging our hats on a government, on a job, on money, Hanging our hats on, you know, I'll get this new gadget and everything will be fine. Any of those things distract us from the highest ideal, which is reliance on God. And God can do amazing things if you, as the Bible says, be still and know that he is God. The caretaker, both the mother and the father sort of thing in there, where he's our father in heaven. But he's our, he cares for us like a mother as well. So there's all of this in here. And I'm kind of having trouble saying it because I didn't really organize it very well. These are just more my thoughts. And I just really think people need to maybe think about, well, why do I feel I need all of this? Why do I think that God won't take care of me? Or why do I think that, you know this is how it's going to go. I, I understand also that, that what is true is that many times the church does not take care of people. And that many times the church, including, you know, the people in it or just the church leadership or what, what have you, do not do what they are supposed to do. And that is also wrong. But what I would encourage people is to think about why they rely on what they rely on. And to pray about, you know, how can I rely on God more? I'm a big opponent of insurances. I personally believe that they don't, they don't help you. I don't think they do. They, <clears throat> you send them money and then they give you a certain percentage of that money back according to how they believe you should use that money, basically. Or how you have both agreed that we're going to use a percentage of this money for. You never get all your money back. You never get covered 100%. You never get any of that. So is that really the best use of the money that God has given you? I don't know. I personally think no. Everybody has to lead by their own convictions on this. But I personally think no. I think that if we are relying on God the way we're supposed to, we are aligning with people who believe the same way, then what will happen is no one who is in need will be in need for very long. And especially in this day and age with all of this social media and everything like that, there's so many ways to get people's bills paid. There's so many ways to get people housing that they, that they need. There's so many ways to do this. And that the church has fallen short on doing, I, I agree, sometimes. So guys, that's all I really wanted to talk to you about today. I don't really have too many verses on this because, let me see if I can find my notes right quick again. Uh, it's basically, I just read all of Zechariah 13. And you may or may not get the same thing. <clears throat> But at the end of Zechariah 13, he's bringing his people back to relying on him, back to the worship that we're built to have. And so I would just say today, read Zechariah 13, see if you get the same thing, or maybe you think I'm crazy, I don't know. <laughs> and then think about why do I have all this insurance? And there's some insurances you have to have because it's illegal not to have them. For example, car insurance. 
But I've known women to insure like their shoes, hats, you know, their clothing. I've known people to have six different insurances on their house because what if? And I just, I believe that if we are people who follow God, the what if, we don't live life by the what if. We live life by when something happens, God's got me. And again, I just want to reiterate and say, that doesn't mean you do nothing. You're working, you're investing, things like that. But I'm thinking that maybe insurances and maybe, you know, don't rely on the government for to give you things. Don't rely on a senator or a congressman or a president to be the fix-all for what's going on in your life. God's the only one who can do that. And I think a lot of times in the Bible, that is solely what he is correcting, is that we start to rely on things, and they start to become our idols. So that's really all I had for today, guys. I think I have gotten the job I went out for. We shall see. If I have, then this has to go down to probably once a week, and it'll probably be longer, longer format. Also, on YouTube... So here's what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to try and stream on Periscope once a week. I'm going to try and record a bunch of videos for YouTube so that will go up twice a week. Depending on what all I want to talk about. So there's that. This one's going up on YouTube. So I will try to have another one by Friday. There's a lot to talk about. Especially in the political arena. Especially when it comes to our guns. And I'd like to start trying to think of, like, what, what would be a solution to what we're facing here? Instead of just going, I hate this, I don't like this, I'm having an emotion here. You guys are really starting to make me feel like I just take a cheese grater across my face every day because of the stupid things people are doing. The laws people are enacting, excuse me, things like that. So I just wanted to get on here and kind of talk about that. Excuse me. If there's anything else you would like to say, you can always at me on Twitter or Facebook, as you can see down here, Politicris in both places. And I'll see you next time, guys. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. And until then, bye.